study we studied about vijayanagara empire and uh, all that four dynasty in the empire we study about sangama dynasty then uh, next is sangama then saluva then then tuluva then aravalu dynasty so you must remember the uh, order of all these four dynasty they marks they might ask for arranging okay now we will see architecture administration we had a study in in that okay administration we know to say everything well it little bit that they issued gold coins called varahas so if questions comes that what is varahas or pagodas that is gold coins so you must know this these terms and silver tar was known as silver coin and jital was copper coin so so this these three you must know about this three okay so we will now we will see the architecture of vijayanagara empire see nothing is of that much importance but in this see, they important tem temples were built and you must remember where are these temples at which place so vithal swami and hajar rama temple is at hampi then tara patri parvati temples both are at chitambaram and varada raja and ekambanath temples is at kanchipuram i think so we say this one also so okay uh, study about where where are these temples so in a static questions they might ask so while preparing for afket exam you all what do prepare all this uh, dance uh, state and dance and also study about music and who are all this uh, followers of that music so study about these two because out of these two one question is compound they used to ask in all shift so study about this if you are not having any pdf or anything tell me i'll share that one about dance and music so now we will study about bahmani kingdom bahmani kingdom in that one you must remember that who was the founder of bahmani kingdom and what was his capture capital so alauddin hasan bahman sa he was a ruler and he was also known as hasan gangu so hasan gangu was the founder of bahmani kingdom and his capital is at gulbarga that is his first capital okay and important uh, from bahmani kingdoms are like ibrahim adil sa and dakhni is a place of persian as court language so ibrahim adil sa he introduced dakhni in place of persian now important mon monuments will see in that uh, bahmani kingdom bahmani kingdom comes under the it was contemporary of uh, contemporary of vijayanagar empire so gol gumbaj was built by muhammad adil sa you all know where is gol gumbaj gol gumbaj is at bijapur so it was built by muhammad adil sa it is famous for the so called whispering gallery and gol gumbaj was designed by yakut of dhabul so don't remember all that much but it was built by muhammad adil sa then kuli kutub sa built the famous called golconda fort and also he was the greatest ruler of kutib sai dynasty and he founded the city of hyderabad so who founded the city of hyderabad that is muhammad kuli kutub sa and hyderabad was in it was known as bhagyanagar and he also built the char minar which is at in hyderabad okay now we finish in all this so from now we will study about religious movements in that bhakti movement and sufi movement will be there then we will discuss about mughal empire then our medieval history will finish and i in the end of the slide i have uh, mentioned some important questions from mughal empire so I study all that and in that uh, there will be no option there, there are no options in that questions only answers are given so i study that question answers because uh, then uh, you can get through and you all be clear to uh, you will all you all will have clear understanding of mughal empire so now we will start about the bhakti movement the bhakti movement was based on the doctrine that the relations between god and man is through love and worship rather than through performing any rituals or religious ceremonies so if questions comes that uh, bhakti movement or sufi movement that was for this uh, relationship between god and man not for worshiping or anything 
so they did not believe in ideal worship idol worship they did not believe so they believed only relationship between god and man is through love and worship rather than performing any rituals so it was not rituals or they did not believe in ideal idol worship it was in south india for the first time that bhakti movement grew from a mere religious doctrine to a broad based popular movement based on social and religious equality okay now see it was led by popular saint poets called alvars who represented emotional side of basvanism so basvanism was uh, represented by alvars so now you must remember in this nanars is not men mentioned but uh, remember that alvars were alvars are those who practice basvanism they worship basvanism and nanars were they worship lord shiva so you must remember these both so alva is for basvanism and nanars is for lord shiva so study this both and if nanars do not come in the slide then note it down somewhere so nanar is for lord shiva and alvars are for basvanism alvars who represented emotional side of basvanism through collective songs called prabandhas it declined after the 10th century but again it regained in the 11th century but it was revived as a philosophical and ideological movement by acharyas so again after it it was revived by acharyas who represented the intellectual side of basvanism in the 11th century so most important among them was ramanuja so whose disciple ram ram ramanuja took it to north india so ramanuja was in south india who who propagated all this uh, bhakti movements after the decline of 10th century but uh, in north india it was brought by ramnanda disciple of ramanuja so main feature in that this bhakti in bhakti movements they are divided into two one is saguna and one is nirguna so remember this saguna nirguna then before that alvar nanas only this four are important so you must but you also must know the name of ramanuja then saguna They, they, this saguna bhakti was where god has either form so saguna believed in formless form god and nirguna they believed in formless means there is no form of god they they might come in any forms so it was formless and saguna was they believed in form of gods so they worshiped in idol okay best form of worship is singing versions and realization of god by personal effort no need of priestly class so based form they believed in that is bhajanas and realization of god and doing that many philosophy were there so remember about this one vishisht devata was by ramanuja acharya so only this one is important vishisht vishisht adivata was by ramanuja acharya okay now we will see the bhakti saints important bhakti saints who are well important okay so first is ramanuja already we had seen who brought, who again again the propagated the bhakti movements in 11th century so now first one is ramanuja only you know the name no need to study all this everything inside this one so know the name ramanuja then ramnanda who who took it to north india so you must remember who took to north india that is ramnanda then kavir the most radical disciple of ramnanda who was opposed to caste creed image worship unnecessary rituals and sought to remove distinction between hindus and muslim and believed in social unity so who believed in hindus and muslim social unity that is kavir then now we will study about guru nanak guru nanak, guru nanak was a nirguna bhakti saint all these were saguna that means form is there god form is there and guru guru nanak nirguna bhakti saint he believed that god is formless it has no form and he was the founder of sikhism then okay chaitanya he is also of bhakti saints he he was the founder of gaudiya or bengal vaishnavism then then next is vidyapati we had seen him in his book in authors and book in that he wrote padavali with uh, in which radha krishna love is mentioned okay 
just uh, go through the name everything are not important in this ramanuja ramananda guru nanak and vidyapati is important then in this mirabai balavacharya surdas tulsidas and sankradeva so mirabai we will know about because he was the only women in that bhakti movement so the most well known women bhakti saint of the krishna cult of vaishnavism so about this one question has come that mirabai followed which cult so she was of krishna cult of vaishnavism then balavacharya he he propounded the philosophy of pushti mal and then next is surdas he was a blind poet of agra so if question comes that who was the blind poet in bhakti movement that is suryadas surdas and he also sang the glory of krishna in his sur sagar so sur sagar was written by surdas in which he sang the glory of krishna then next is tulsidas the greatest saint poet of the ram bhakti cult so ram bhakti cult of vaishnavism is tulsidas and krishna bhakti cult is mirabai and suridas tulsidas also wrote ram charitamanas kavita wali and gita wali so these three books you must remember ram charitamanas kavita wali and gita wali then next is sankara deva the founder of vaishnav devotional movement in assam so this question have come in serious that who was the founder of vaishnav devotional movement in assam that is sankara deva in assam it is sankara deva so remember this one then now we will study about dadu dayal he was also a nirguna saint and remember about guru nanak he was also a nirguna saint as guru nanak. okay see he was also a nirguna saint so you must remember these two names okay we say about this one okay now remember dadu dayal he he was the founder of dadu pant then tyag raja a telugu saint who spent his life in tamil nadu he adorned god in the form of rama the incarnation of vishnu and hero of valmiki ramayana so he also believed in rama avatar tyagaraja then all these were from mostly from south india and one from north india who propounded the the bhakti movement in north india and one is for assam that we had seen here assam here, here it is some sankara deva remember all this all the names you must remember then bhakti saints of maharashtra in maharashtra also bhakti movement was going on so gyaneswara or gyanadeva the fountain head of bhakti movement in maharashtra wrote a long commentary on the bhagavad gita called bhavarth dipka he also wrote the commentary on bhagavad gita called bhavarth dipka and more commonly known as gyaneswari the next is namdeva remember what namdeva it has come in series not in after so a contemporary of ganeshwara he was a tailor by caste and was opposed to all caste distinction why he is important because he was tailor by caste but before all this all this all mostly all were from brahmin family but he was tailor by caste so namdeva is important the object of his devotion was bithova or bithal identified with vishnu of pandharpur the cult of bithova or bithal known as varkari so this is not important but pandharpur is important and bithova remember about the name of bithova and he was tailor by caste namdeva okay eknath he wrote, who wrote a commentary on the ramayana called the bhagavad ramayana so don't remember all this only remember eknath name he was also from bhakti movement he was from maharashtra so remember who all were from maharashtra then tukaram who who wrote abhangaj poem abhangaj so tukaram wrote abhangaj so remember this one then next is ramdas and this dasa bodha is the compilation of compilation of his writings and sermons okay now we will see about the sufi movement so in this all these bhakti movements this maharashtra all that bhakti saints remember all that name because they might ask that who was not from maharashtra or from the among following given saints who was from maharashtra like questions they might ask so remember all that names and from assam who propounded that is uh, sankara deva 
and who propounded in North India that is Ramnanda. So remember here also remember names. So only you need to remember names. Okay. Now we will see about the Sufi movement. See, Bhakti is in Hinduism and Sufism is the mystical movement in Islam. So the Sufis while accepting the Sariyat do not confine their religious practice to formal adherence and straight cultivation of religious experience aimed at direct perception of God. So the Sufi doctrine was based on union with God which can be achieved through love of God, prayers, parts and rituals without reference to Hindu or Muslim. So they not uh, refer that Hindu or Muslim but simply they mention that the Sufi doctrine was based on which on union with God which can be achieved through love of God, prayers, fast and rituals. So in Sufi movement main features were Silsilaj. Silsilaj is also known as orders. So they might ask which of the which of the movements person they believe in Silsila. So that is Sufi movement. So you remember this one what is in Silsila and it was followed in Sufi movement. Sufi is aimed at service of mankind through spiritual self-development and discourage materialist, materialistic life but not in favor of complete renunciation. Then remember all this Sufi saints name and all Sufi saints name see in Bhakti movements also all names are important and only some are having one or two points. In Sufi saints also saints are important all saints and in that also they also have some points because they have done some extra work. So first one is Khwaja Ali Pujoviri also known as Tata Ganj Bhaks. The author of the celebrated manual of Sufism entitled Kasaf Ul Majo. So don't remember this one so only to remember the name. Khwaja Al Hujwiri. Then Sheikh Bahauddin Jakaria, the founder of Suhar Vardi order. So remember, eh, not in Hapkat but in Sirius, they might ask about this order that is Silsila. Suhar Vardi Silsila. So among, among the following, who followed the Suhar Vardi Silsila of Sufi movement? So one is, okay, sorry guys, actually light went off and laptop was not charged. So that's why there were some issues. Okay. Where, uh, we were studying about the Sheikh Bahauddin Jakaria. So he followed the Suhara, Suhara Vardi Silsilaj, also known as Order, who founded the first leading Khanka in India at Multan. So remember who followed Suhara Vardi Silsilaj, that is Sheikh Bahauddin Jakaria. Okay. Next we will see. Kwaja Muindin Chisti, the founder of Chisti Silsila. So there were many Silsilas. So in that one Chisti Silsila, and in the previous slide we had seen about the we had seen about this one Suara Vadi Silsila. So Suara Vadi Silsila was followed by Sheikh Bahuddin Jakaria, and Chisti Silsila was followed by Kwaja Muindin Chisti and Sheikh Hamid Hamid Duin Nagauri. Who all followed the Chesi Silsila, their names are given. Say Khamudin Nagauri, Khwaja Kutubin Bhaktiyar Kaki, remember this name. On his name only, Kutubu Minar is built. So remember this name. And he was the contemporary of Kutubuddin Avak. Then Baba Faraduddin Ganj Aishakar, who, also, who was also known as Baba Farid. Then Sheikh Nijamuddin Aulia, Sheikh Nasuddin Muhammad. Remember this name, then Baba Farid, Baba Farid name, then Kwaja Bhaktiyar Kaki and Sheikh Humudin Nagauri. All these, they followed Chisti Silsila. So remember these names. They might be person, they might ask. This Silsila they followed. Okay. Now we will see about the some other Sufi saints. Sheikh Badruddin Samarkandi founded Firdosi order. So now you can see. Silsila, that Silsila also known as order. We had seen Suara Vardhi Silsila, Chesti Silsila. Now here it comes the name of Firdosi Silsila, Firdosi order. So Sheikh Badruddin Samarkandi followed the Firdosi Silsila. Then Sah Namatu Ila Kadri and Sah Abdullah Tutari. They follow the Kwadariya Silsila. So also you must remember this. 
Badaria Sinsula was followed by these both and it was founded by Shah Namatullah Quadri and Shah Abdullah Sutari founded the Sutari order. So remember this one also Sutari order was founded by Shah Abdullah Sutari. Then Mia Mir, he also followed Quad Quadria Silsila. Then Naksa Bandil Silsila was found by Khwaja Baki Bilbila. Uh, sorry, Bila. And his most famous saint was Sheikh Ahmad Sindhi and who was also known as Mujahid, Mujahid Ali. So remember it was found by Khwaja Baki Bila. So remember this name. So some important words and meanings. It was used in the Sufi movement that is Murid means disciple, Khalifa means successor, successor Khanka means the hospice and Jiarat means pilgrimage to the tombs of Sufi saint. So remember all these important terms and remember all these silsilas and who followed it. Remember all those and uh, also remember out the name of uh, this all Sufi saints and Bhakti saints. So now we we have finished this about religious movements in medieval India and now we will we'll start about the Mughal Emperor. Okay, now we will start about the Mughal period. So Mughal period, it was from 1526 to 40 AD. Then in that middle, uh, Sher Shah Suri came and he was ruling. And after it again Mughal Emperor started, that is from 1555 to 1857 AD till the rule of British. So now we first we will study about Babur. So Babur name means you must remember the battle of Panipat first. That took place in which year? That took place in 1526 and it was between Ibrahim Lodi and Babur. So you must remember this one. Battle of Panipat 1, Battle of Panipat 2, Battle of Panipat 3. You must remember all those important battles and it was fought between whom and whom and who won the battle. So you must remember everything. Okay. The foundation of Mughal rule in India was laid by Babur in 1526. He was a descendant of Timur from the side of his father and Chengiz Khan from the side of his mother. Babur defeated Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Panipat on April 21, 1526. Don't remember this date, but remember this year. It was fought in 1526. And then, in which Babur won and he established Mughal dynasty, which lasted till the establishment of British rule in India. And remember all that battle was, which was fought by Babur. So one is battle of Panipat 1, that in 1526. Then again in 1527, he fought a battle at Khanwa, Battle of Khanwa. It was between Rana Sangha Mewar and Babur. Then Battle of Chanderi. It was between Medni Rai of Chanderi. And then next is in 1529, he defeated Muhammad Lodi, uncle of Ibrahim Lodi at Dhagra. See, this Muhammad Lodi, Rana Sangha, and this Medni Rai, all these were that who called Babur for defeating Ibrahim Lodi and to establish the rule of. Mughal. Actually, they wanted to rule, but in that what happened? Baba again fought with them and he won all the battles and he started ruling. In 1530, he died at Agra and his tomb is at Kabul. So, remember this place name Baba's tomb is at Kabul. So, remember that. Remember all that Mughal emperors and their tombs is if it comes in the slides. So, remember that at which place their tombs is located. He adopted Tugluma, the flank party system and was the part to use gunpowder and artillery in India. So if questions that comes that who was the first person to use gunpowder and artillery in India. So that is Babur. Then he wrote his autobiography Tijuk I Babri in Turkish. In which he gives and so if he, he wrote his autobiography. So questions might come that. In Mughal Empress, who all wrote their own autobiography. So remember that. Baba also wrote auto, his autobiography, that is Tujuk I Babuli. Then it was translated into Persian by Abdul Rahim Khana e Khana, and it was named as Baba Nama. 
so baba nama was written by abdul rahim khane khana and it was the translation of tujukai babri into persian language and it in english it was it was translated by nadan bevri he complied two anthology of poems that is diwan and mubayya and also he wrote risal risal ai usaj or letters of babar so don't remember these two but remember this one risal ai usaj or the letters of babar and tujuk ai babri and it was translated by abdul rahim khane khana or remember this three battles and one more four battles and he was the first to uh, bring uh, gunpowder and artillery in india okay now we will study about himayu after babar himayu started ruling so he ruled from 1530 to 1540 and in that after that he was defeated by sher shah suri he ran he ran to some other place then again when sher shah suri died again he came back and he attacked the suri dynasty and then after that he again he started ruling from 1555 so now he was the son of babar and ascended the throne in 1530 don't remember this brother's name he fought two battles at ser uh, against ser sha at chosa 1539 so battle of chosa was fought in 1539 between ser sha and himayu and at konoj that is also known as bilgram in 1540 and in which bao uh, himayu was completely defeated by him then what happened he escaped to iran where he passed 12 years of his life in exile so remember battle of chosa and battle of konoj then after ser sha's death himayu invaded india in 1555 and then again he became the ruler of india he died while climbing down the stairs of his library at dinpana in 1556 so who died while playing polo from falling down from a horse that is kutubuddin ever and he died from falling down from the library stairs that library also it was also named as dinpana so remember this library name dinpana who was buried in delhi so himayu was buried in delhi his sister gulbadan begum she wrote himayu nama wrote his biography so himayu actually see, himayu was uneducated so he did not write his bi- autobiography or something so his sister wrote himayu nama his sister name is gulbadan begum and uh, baba wrote his own autobiography he built dinpana at delhi as his second capital so he built dinpana at delhi as his second capital okay now we will study about ser shah suri because uh, after defeating in the battle of uh, chosa and battle of konoj ser shah suri got to rule in the india and he started ruling from 1540 and he ruled till 1545 He was a son of Hasan Khan, the Jagirdar of Sasaram. Ibrahim Gaudi transferred his father's Jagir to him. So he was son of Hasan Khan. Don't you know this one? But he started ruling from 1540. Okay. Now we will study about Sir Sa. He defeated Himayu in the Battle of Chosa and assumed the title of Sir Sa. Actually, his full name, only name was Hasan. what was his name so his name is not given so remember one is sir sasuri his full name was sir sasuri and that sir sa he got title in the battle of chosa and in 1540 he defeated himayu in the battle of konoj so remember these two battles then he died in 1545 while conquering kalinjar see in sir sasuri era what happened he went to conquer the kalinjar in that what happened uh, that uh, by the missile he by his own missile He, he had done like you can say that it was a suicide of uh, that says a story dynasty so he was killed by his own mistake so he doing in a while conquering kalinjar he died in 1545 and during his brief reign he brought he introduced a brilliant administration land revenue policy and several several other measures to improve the economic condition of his subjects so that gt road in india that is the Uh, that is a gift given to india by ser sha suri he issued the coin called rupiya so first time coin rupiya was started by ser sha suri and fixed the standard rate weights and measures all over the empire then see he also improved the communications by building several highways he built the grand tank road 
GT road that runs from Kolkata to Peshawar. Sorry guys, there is some issue with laptop. Okay, we, are, we were seeing about Grand Trunk Road. Grand Trunk Road that was built by Sersa Suri. Then he introduced the principle of local responsibility for local crimes and Mukadams were punished for failure to find the culprits. Then he built Purana Kila at Delhi. So you must remember he built Purana Kila at Delhi. And all okay. And land was measured and uh, one by third of the average was fixed as a land tax. So remember our Grand Trunk Road, Rupiah, what Purana Kila and about land tax. Okay, okay. About sales or sorry, one this much who is there. So you must remember all these facts about it. Also remember this coin called Rupiah is most important. Then now we will study about the Akbar. Akbar, the eldest son of Himayu, ascended the throne under the title of Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar Batsa Gaji at the young age of 14 at Kalanwar. Punjab and his tutor Bairam Khan was appointed as the regent. Regent means so he was the highest this soldier, highest rank soldier in the Akbar's court. So he was uh, since this uh, Akbar was of uh, like in child age, so Bairam Khan was he was actually he was guiding Akbar to rule rule the Mughal dynasty. So in the second battle of Panipat, so second battle of Panipat was fought during the rule of Akbar. It was fought between Hemu, the Hindu general of Muhammad Adil Shah, and Bairam Khan, the regent of Akbar. So it was fought between Bairam Khan and Hemu, in which Hemu was defeated. So in this, in which this Akbar, the Rajputa kingdom of Mewar, put and fierce defense under the Rana Uday Singh and his son Rana Pratap. But after it, what he wanted to rule all over India. So Akbar tried to win over the Rajputas wherever possible and inducted Rajputa kings into Mughal service and treat them at a par with Mughal nobility. But it, so for that, what he has done, he married Arka Wai. So one wife name was Arka Wai, daughter of Bharmal or Bihari Mal, who was the ruler of Kachwala Rajputa kingdom. Then his secular policy with the Hindus. He also displayed a secular policy with Hindu. So remember his wife name, Arka Wai. Then battle of Haldigati during his reign. So battle of, battle of Haldigati was fought between the Rana Pratap and Mughal army led by Man Singh of Amir. So remember battle of Haldigati. Okay. As these are some important battles. These are some important battles. Don't remember everything. Okay. This is of not of that much important. So but you must remember that battle of Haldigati and battle of Panipat. See, in that Akbar also proclaimed, proclaimed a new religion, Dine Ilahi. So if question comes who found Dine Ilahi religion, that is Akbar. And who was known as Ille Ilahi? That is Balban. We are studying in the Delhi Sultanate period. So see that slide also. So Din Elahi was founded by Akbar. And Birbal was the only Hindu who followed this new religion, this Din Elahi. Akbar built Fatehpur Sikri, Agra Fort, Lahore Fort, Allahabad Fort, and Himayush Tomb at Delhi. So just, uh, it's like, just remember the place name and it was built by Akbar. Sheikh Salim Chistri, a Sufi saint, blessed Akbar with a son who was named as Salim Sheikh Baba, later who was known as Jangir. So, in the honor of Salim Chistri, Akbar shifted his court from Agra to Fatehpur Sikri. So, from Agra to Fatehpur Sikri, she shifted the capital in the honor of Salim Chistri, who gifted him a child. So, remember about all these Noratna names. Who are, who are the Nine jewels of Akbar. First one is Birbal, administrator, who was administration, administrator, Abul Fajal, then Faji, then Todarmal, who was finance minister, and he also brought the Bandubas system, Thasala Bandubas or Japti system. Then Bhagwan Das, Man Singh, Tansen, who was musician, then Abdul Rahim Khane Khana, Hindi poet, and Mulado. Then Tulsi Das was his contemporary of Akbar. 
So, deem that uh, Akbar created Tulsi Das also lived. Who wrote Ram Chaitanya Manas? When Akbar died, he was buried at Sikandra near Agra. So he was buried near Agra. He was the first Mughal ruler who divorced religion from politics. And Birbal was killed in the battle with Isupajai tribe. And then Abul Fajal was murdered. After Akbar, all this, uh, his nine generals were murdered or they died into some region. Okay. Now we will see about the Jangir. So in Akbar, remember all important battles and about this nine general names and about Dina Eli, some important terms which had taken place during the Akbar rule. Now we will study about Jangir. He is known for his strict administration of justice. He established Jangir, Jangir I Adal at Agra court. And Jangir married Mihara Un Nisa, who later got the title of Nur Jahan. And she was made the official Patsa Begum. Jangir also, see, Nur Jahan also he married. Then also he married Jagat Gosain or Jodha Bai of Marwar at and the Kashwaha princess. And then during, it was during his reign that uh, England, Britishers started getting permission to come to India and trade in India. So uh, first Britishers come to come in India was during the Jangir reign and Captain B before that Captain William Hawkins came and he wanted to ask permission. So he came to Jangir court. So then he was given the mansab. Then after it, this Jangir denied. But after it again, Sir Thomas Roy, he came and then he was given the permission to do trade in India. Then after that, they started doing trading. Then after it, so they started occupying all the places. So remember this Captain William Hawkins and Sir Thomas Roy came to India during the rule of Jangir. Okay. Let's see here. He granted permission to the English to establish a trading port at Surat. Okay. His reign was marked by several revolts. His son Khusro, who received patronage of, uh, patronage of fifth Sikh Guru, Guru Arjun Dev, revolted. Oh, he was patronage for, of Guru Arjun Dev and he started revolting against his own father, Jangir. Then Arjun Dev was later sentenced to death for his blessing to the rebel prince. When during his last period, Puram, that is Sajan, son of Jangir, Mahavat Khan, military general of Jangir, also revolted against him. And then uh, again, Saja, what happened? He captured him and he put he has put him in the jail. He wrote his memoirs to Yukai Jangiri. So he also wrote his own biography. So Jangir also wrote his own biography, and then Babur also wrote his own biography. And then he was buried in, when he died, he was buried in Lahore. So remember that he was buried in Lahore. Then now we will study about Shah Jahan. So his mother name was Jodhavai or Jagat Gosai. He was best known for his Deccan and foreign policies. The first thing that he had to face was revolts in Bundelkhand and the Deccan area. Three years after his accession, he believed, sorry, his beloved wife in Taj Mahal died in 1631, then to perpetuate her memory, he built the Taj Mahal at Agar. Then during his reign, many other princes also accepted his suzerainty, that is one is Sultanate of Bijapur, Golconda and Nizam Sahi density of Ahmadnagar. Okay, now this is important, during his reign, French tra traveller Bernier and Tavernier visited and Itali Italian traveler Niccolo Manuki and Peter Mundi they also visited uh, which court Saja court. So during his reign only they came to India. So remember all the we have seen in the slides. So remember that one. And uh, he is known for the promotion of art, culture and architecture. So if question comes who is known for promotion of art, culture and architecture from Mughal Empire that is Saja. And he built the red fort, Jama Masjid, Taj Mahal all these was built by Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan was imprisoned by his own son Aurangzeb. See, tit for tat. Jahangir was imprisoned by Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan was imprisoned by Aurangzeb in the Agra fort, where he died in the captivity in 1666. 
and he was buried at Taj Mahal, Agra. Okay. Now here Aurangzeb will study what Aurangzeb. So Aurangzeb defeated Dara at Dharmat. Aurangzeb had had brothers. So in that Dara also wanted to rule in India. So he was opposing against him. So Aurangzeb defeated Dara, who was brother of Aurangzeb. Dara in sixteen thousand six hundred fifty eight. Then Samugad, then Devaraya, in which Samugad was the decisive one, and Devaraya was the last one. And he also got the title of Alamgir, means ruler of the world. So he got the title of Alamgir. So who was known as Alamgir? That is Alamgir. So remember only this one, Alamgir, who was the who was got the title of Alamgir, Alamgir. Okay. Now we will see about his all events happened during the. Aurangzeb rule. So Aurangzeb, he fought with Shivaji during his period. What happened? Shivaji rose to the power, and then also in the last he fought with him. Aurangzeb captured Guru Tegh Bahadur, the ninth Guru of Sikhs in thousand six hundred seventy five. So he captured Guru Tegh Bahadur and executed him when he refused to embrace Islam. So he Guru Tegh Bahadur denied to follow Islam. Then Aurangzeb. Executed him. The tenth and last Sikh Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, son of Guru Tegh Bahadur, organized his followers into community of warriors called Khalsa to fight the Muslim tyranny. In that, Guru Gobind Singh was also assassinated. Then the original name of Banda Bahadur was Lakshman Dev Singh. Banda Bahadur, a trusted disciple of Guru Gobind Singh, continued to continue the war against Mughals. Know to remember this one, but remember that Guru Gobind Singh, Guru Tegh Bahadur, all these both were hanged, uh, assassinated by Aurangzeb, and Aurangzeb was the most and uh, sorry last and strongest ruler of Mughal Empire. After that, it started declining. He was also known as Jinda Pir, the living saint. So Alangir, yeah, Jinda Pir, both were the name of Aurangzeb, and he, he was buried at. Khuldabad or Dolatabad. Then Jajia. See, Akbar banned Jajia, and Jajia was again reintroduced during the rule of Aurangzeb. So you must remember that uh, Jajia was banned during the rule of Akbar, and again in the rule of uh, Aurangzeb, Jajia was reintroduced. So remember this one. Now we will see the administration during the Mughal Empire and everything. This later Mughals were not of that much strong, so nothing is of that much importance in later Mughals. Only you must you must remember about Bahadur Shah, to the last Mughal emperor of India, and that he was sent to jail in Rangoon. So that one you must remember. Other all are not of that much importance. So see, in administration you will see they divided into subas, which were further divided away into. Sarkar, Pragna, and Gram. So Suva was province, Sarkar was district, Pragna was taluka, and Gram was village. And the Mughal Mansab was dual: Jat, that is personal rank and pay status, and Sawar, number of horsemen to maintain. And remember this one: the term Mansab indicates the rank of his its holder. And Akbar, who introduced Mansabdari system? That is Akbar. Okay. Now some other important terms we will study during the Mughal Empire rule. See, the Sala Bandobas or Japji system that was introduced by Todermal during the rule of Akbar. So remember about the Sala Bandobas or Japji system. So remember this one. Then Babur also built. See architecture. If you see, they built many important architectures in India during their during their timeline. So Babur built two mosques. That is one is at Kabuli Bagh. At Panipat and other is at Sambal in Royal Kand. So this is not important, but you must know that Babur also built two mosques. Then Himayu tombs was built by his widow Bega Begum, also known as Haji Begum. Then uh, building at Fatehpur Sikri, that is Panch Mahal. Then Buland Darwaza from the main entrance of Fatehpur Sikri. Then Salim Chistri's tomb. Then Palace of Birbal, Palace of Tanzen. Then remember about this one. Nur Jahan built Itamudul, Itamud Ud Dola, or Mirza Gyasu Beg's marble tomb at Agra. And remember about most important about this one. What is known as 
Pytra Dora, that is Flora Designs. So remember this, and it was first it was you doing the rule, rule of Mughal Emperor. And remember what is the meaning of Pytra Dora, that is Flora Designs made up of semi precious stones technique. And Jange introduced virus use of marble. So remember that uh, marble was used during the rule of Jangir. Okay. Now some other Moti Majid, Khas Mal. So remember about Moti Majid. Only mosque, mosque made up of marble. It was built by Saja. So remember about this one. And they fought all this everyone in Vilvinai. Then Takht I Tosh, Peacock Throne. It was also built uh, by Saja. And Saja also laid the foundation of Saja in 1637. Then Bibi Kamakavara by Aurangzeb. Then famous painters of Jangir's court were Abdul Hassan, Ustad Mansur, and Vishan Das. They were the famous painters. And remember this important autobiography and important books written by the authors during the rule of Mughal Emperor. So Tujuk I Babri, it is the autobiography of Babur. Then remember what Himayu Nama, that is Ul Badan Begum, who wrote the biography of Himayu. Then Akbar Nama, Abul Fajal. Then Tujuk I Jangiri, written by Jangir. Then An I Akbari, written by Abul Fajal. So remember all these names, they are of importance. So is now Mughal Emperors, we have finished.